Two moving averages can be used together to generate crossover signals. In technical analysis of the financial markets, John Murphy calls this the double crossover method. Double crossovers involve one relatively short moving average and one relatively long moving average. As with all moving averages, the general length of the moving average defines the time frame for the system. A system using a 5-day EMA and 35-day EMA would be deemed short-term. A system using a 50-day SMA and 200-day SMA would be deemed medium-term, perhaps even long-term. A bullish crossover occurs when the shorter moving average crosses above the longer moving average. This is also known as a golden cross. A bearish crossover occurs when the shorter moving average crosses below the longer moving average. This is known as a death cross, or sometimes referred to as a dead cross. Moving average crossovers produce relatively late signals. After all, the system employs two lagging indicators. The longer the moving average periods, the greater the lag in the signals. These signals work great when a good trend takes hold. However, a moving average crossover system will produce lots of whipsaws in the absence of a strong trend. There is also a triple crossover method that involves three moving averages. Again, a signal is generated when the shortest moving average crosses the two longer moving averages. A simple triple crossover system might involve 5-day, 10-day, and 20-day moving averages. The chart on the screen shows a stock with a 10-day EMA, green dotted line, and 50-day EMA, red line. The black line is the daily close. Using a moving average crossover would have resulted in three whipsaws before catching a good trade. The 10-day EMA broke below the 50-day EMA in late October. But this did not last long as the 10-day moved back above in mid-November. This cross lasted longer, but the next bearish crossover in January occurred near late November price levels. Resulting in another whipsaw, this bearish cross did not last long as the 10-day EMA moved back above the 50-day a few days later. After three bad signals, the fourth signal foreshadowed a strong move as the stock advanced over 20%. There are two takeaways here. First, crossovers are prone to whipsaw. A price or time filter can be applied to help prevent whipsaws. Traders might require the crossover to last 3 days before acting or require the 10-day EMA to move above, below the 50-day EMA by a certain amount before acting. Second, MACD can be used to identify and quantify these crossovers. The MACD will show a line representing the difference between the two exponential moving averages. MACD turns positive during a golden cross and negative during a death cross. The chart on the screen shows a stock with the 50-day EMA, 200-day EMA and MACD. There were four moving average crossovers over a 2.5-year period. The first three resulted in whipsaws or bad trades. A sustained trend began with the fourth crossover as the stock advanced to the mid-twenties. Once again, moving average crossovers work great when the trend is strong, but produce losses in the absence of a trend.